80% of the population of the U.S. is in urban or suburban areas, and so it's really important for a lot of people to have certain skills for urban survival. We're going to talk about some basic things. A lot of these you might already know, but it's really good to always think about these things because a lot of times we can get lulled into the mundane. We're going from day to day, and we kind of let things just go. And so we're going to talk about nine different critical things that you need to consider in an urban survival situation. Now number one is really a big one and that is just blending in. Blending in with the people that are around you. Typically people in a city have a certain look. Uh, there's definitely large variations but uh, one example that I've had in traveling a lot um, in my earlier life uh, going to a lot of big cities is I'll never forget the time I was in Chicago. We were at a big show and we were going out to eat at a very nice restaurant. Uh, I was wearing this bright orange shirt. <laughs> it's just something that, I'll, especially in our area, people just wear those kind of shirts. And so I, was, I walked into the restaurant and it, I felt like I was standing out like a sore thumb. Everybody around me was in darker clothes, more subdued uh, tones. And of course it was a really nice restaurant so they were dressed up. But even then they were in darker clothes. And so when I walked in, I was like a beacon and I stood out. And so one of the first things you wanna do, whether you're in town, whether you're in a suburban area, is to blend in with what people typically wear. And that way you're not standing out. This has a little bit to do with the gray man, which is an important concept to be able just to blend in. Having a bag that does blend in, wearing clothes, again, that do blend in, uh, being able to walk down the street and people not notice you, because a lot of times, you know, you might be dressed up really nice and people just happen to notice you. I know I saw a while back they were having some riots and there was a reporter there in a blue button down shirt and he stood out like a sore thumb because everybody else was wearing gray and black and different colors. And he was accosted and he was actually assaulted. And so again, making sure that you blend in with the crowd. Now, number two is a big one with self-defense. And of course, that is, if you're watching this channel, you already kind of have self-defense in mind. Uh, I have a CWP, which is our concealed carry permit, and I carry a firearm with me at all times. Uh, and then when I go to bed, it's right beside on my nightstand. But that is one thing that I rely on for self-defense, not just for me or my family, but also someone in need and being able to stand in the gap. But there are a lot of times where a firearm is not the answer. You know, it's like they say, when you have a hammer, everything's a nail. So you need to have some different alternative ideas. And two guys, sometimes firearms are not enough. Uh, so first off, you need to have some kind of basic self-defense skills. If you need to go hands-on, you're able to defend yourself and to get out of the situation. Uh, for me, I have studied martial arts most of my life. And I was also a wrestler in high school. and you know, I've just always been in that mindset. When it comes down to it in a physical altercation, you know, I have some skills. A lot of people have never been in a fight. But here's the thing, guys, watching different videos with surveillance videos where people are attacked, a lot of times they just don't know what to do. And so taking some basic self-defense classes can go a long way. Uh, real, knowing how to punch, knowing how to kick, you know, it's really important knowing vulnerabilities with people and what you need to go for to get them off of you and de-escalate the situation. Uh, and guys, you need to get in good physical shape. If you're just sitting around on a computer and the older I get, the less active I tend to be. And so I have to get and force myself out there into situations. Whether it's just walking, whether it's running, and you need to be able to run. Uh, you need to be able to get. Now some of you guys have physical limitations and that's understandable. But if you're a fairly healthy person, uh, you need to get out and be physical. Get your cardiovascular going. If you need to run, you need to be able to run and get out of the situation. Now, one tool that you can really carry about anywhere is a flashlight and having one with a crenulated bezel to be able to use in a certain situation. Uh, flashlights are actually used more than any other tool for self-defense other than the fist. It's actually a force multiplier and you're able to use it better uh, than you would be even with your hands on. Also, carrying pepper spray, and that's something that I've really become big on lately, especially with riots and things that have happened all over the U.S. 
And guys, if you're in a road rage incident, a lot of times pepper spray will diffuse the situation in a hurry. Uh, you're just minding your own business. Somebody comes up to your car and starts trying to open the door or gets in the window, just spray them in the eyes. They'll understand that it's time to step away. And it's non-lethal, so you don't have to draw your firearm. Uh, having a knife can also be something, especially if you live in an area where firearms are not allowed. And that's one of the big problems in an urban situation is you're facing a lot of times where you can't have or possess a firearm, you can't get a concealed carry permit. And so having some basic self-defense tools, know how to use them, uh, that goes a long way. And that's a big one for urban self-defense. Number four is situational awareness. Be aware of your surroundings. Be aware of threats that are coming up. Uh, if you're on your cell phone, you're walking through a parking lot, or you're walking down the sidewalk, you are completely unaware of things that are happening around you. And it's not just the things that are happening in front of you, but it's being occasionally looking behind you, making sure that you're in a good position, that you are in a safe position. Uh, but when you do see those telltale signs and something's starting to bother you, Get on the other side of the street or you know take a different route if you know that there's trouble ahead and it might take you a little longer but it's really important to know and to read people you know one thing that a lot of people live in is in the green zone they just walk around they're completely oblivious to anything that's going on around them until there is a confrontation and so you need to be able to identify possible confrontations that are coming up and avoid them if at all possible Number five is navigation and knowing the area that you're in. If you're going into an area that you're unfamiliar with, plan that out ahead of time. Know some different routes to be able to get out. Guys, you need to know how to avoid those situations. Many years ago, I was in a city. Uh, we were down for a, a big show and we were out one night. It was kind of late and I got separated from the group. I, I still don't know how that happened, but I found myself in a parking lot and I was walking around and honestly, I had no idea where I was. Uh, ended up, I was in a really bad area of town. Now I got back to my friends fairly quickly, but it really woke me up to knowing the areas that I'm in. And so when you're getting ready to go somewhere, it's so simple to check your phone and look and see what's going on around you knowing a little bit about the area that you're in to avoid those bad areas where you could possibly face, you know, somebody that's mugging you or attacking you. And, you know, you just stay again with the crowd. It's really important a lot of times to stay. The, the more people that you have around you, the better off you're going to be. And so try to travel in groups. But if you're on your own, you know, know the areas that you're in. And guys, with the uptick in riots and protest, it's good to be able to avoid those situations. You don't want to get yourself in the middle of a protest and then find out that you're on the wrong side of a riot. Uh, you can be picked out. And again, that's where blending in is really important. Uh, blending in with those that are around you, not standing out in the crowd, uh, not maybe wearing a shirt that identifies you with a certain political persuasion and being able to get out of those areas. You know, it's important to be able to stand for what you believe in, but when it comes to certain times, guys, you know, you can really endanger yourself and your life, especially if you're with your family. But just avoid those situations, whether you're on foot or you're in a vehicle. Uh, we've seen where people have been pulled from their vehicles and beaten, severely even shot. And so we need to make sure that we stay out of areas that are causing riots. My father-in-law, who lives up in Tennessee, they had a uh, protest. He had no idea. He was just driving down the road. He was stopped at a red light. All of a sudden, the protest, as it passed in front of him, he had a text from a good friend of his that said, hey, stay off this certain street. He started laughing. He goes, here I am. I'm right there on that street. He had no idea. And so really having an idea that certain riots could be taking place, and again, avoiding those situations. Communication skills, and we're not talking about radios or your phone. We're talking about dealing with people. Uh, diffuse the situation, have skills to where you can keep things kind of calm, relaxed, get yourself out of the situation as easy as possible. You know, don't get fired up, don't lose your temper, just stay calm and get out of the area if at all possible. Having those skills, thinking ahead of time, you know what, I just need to survive and so I'm going to try to do the right thing here, I'm going to keep it on the down low, I'm going to keep it calm and I'm just going to get myself out. The last thing you want to do is to escalate a situation. If you escalate a situation and then you do have to use self-defense methods, uh, you can actually be charged. 
And so you want to make sure that you try your best to de-escalate, get out of the situation, so that if you are in a life and death situation, you can draw your firearm in self-defense in a justifiable manner. Driving, which we kind of touched on with avoiding riots and things, but if there are trouble spots in your area, uh, you need to avoid them. And you need to know these are some ways for me to get out of this situation. If traffic is stopped up ahead because the roads are blocked, you need to pull off. You need to take another route. If there are things that are going on, you need to know about it. Keep check with your local news. Know what's going on in your area. A lot of times we depend on just national news. We're not looking at what's going on locally. And so you need to have a good idea of what's going on in your community. Now one skill that you need to think about, and this is more of an SHTF situation, are scavenging skills. If you need to be able to acquire items, uh, food is a big one. And if you find yourself in an urban situation, you know, going to the grocery may be endangering your life. You may need to try the dumpster diving. I mean, that is a possibility, especially really good restaurants. It's not my favorite, but it's something that you need to have that skill. Also, certain items that people are throwing away or things that you might be able to use uh, for certain things that you're trying to do to put together. And so having some scavenging skills. Now, you want to make sure that you don't go into places where there's private property. You don't want to steal things. Uh, that's just wrong on every level. So, and you become part of the problem instead of the solution. And so make sure that you take care not to grab things and to steal things, but scavenging uh, is definitely something that you might need to incorporate in your survival skills. And last but not least is mental preparedness. And that's really what this video is about, is thinking ahead when these things could happen. Making sure that you are carrying some supplies on you, making sure that you do have some means of self-defense with you, even if it's just pepper spray. Uh, having that, a flashlight, like we talked about with self-defense, or just where you're going. Having that mental preparedness, thinking if I'm attacked, this is what my plan is. What am I going to do? How am I going to get out of this situation? And it really relates to everything we've already talked about. But a lot of times people just don't think ahead. And so you need to think, you need to consider, I need to survive. If things are going wrong, I need to be able to think ahead so I'm not panicking. I'm making wise choices. At knowing the directions that you need to get out, that you need to your escape routes, the ways to be able to avoid certain things. All these things are part of mental preparedness. Now obviously you're watching this video so you are mentally preparing and you need to continue that education because survival is critical. That's what keeps us alive and so we need not only for ourselves but also for our families to be ready for whatever hits us. And guys with the way this year has started out we need to really be on our toes. And if you're serious about prepping and survival, check out Survival Dispatch Insider. It is the best resource on the web for survival and prepping. Uh, they use many of the top names in the survival world. And we upload one video that's exclusive to the Insider every week. I'll have a link down below in the description. Well worth checking out. Be strong. Be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic. men are typically physically phys is having that pepper spray and guys if you're in a uh, and so we're going to talk about being able to survive having some urban survival skills to get you through about any situation not any situation but a lot of situations maybe um, no one can know what all is going to happen <laughs> so be prepared <laughs>